Dean and Tyler Listel are registered investment advisor representatives. Investment advisory services offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, and Secure Retirement Solutions, LLC are not affiliated companies. It's time for Secure Retirement Solutions with your hosts, Dean and Tyler Listel, fully licensed retirement specialists from Secure Retirement Solutions in Green Bay. Now, here are your hosts, Dean and Tyler. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Tyler and I will discuss topics that affect your retirement, such as investments, income planning, social security, and much more. How are you this morning, Tyler? Good morning, Dean. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good. Thank you. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about uh, the things that you can do right now to prepare for retirement. And uh, this is very important because whether the market is up or whether the market is down, if you prepare um, for retirement, it really should not affect the time frame to retire based on the market unless, of course, you didn't have enough money put aside in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the very basics that you can look at right now to prepare yourself for retirement. And the first one we're going to talk about is obvious, and that is, you know, save and invest. Uh, Many times we'll see people come in in their 50s and they're wanting to retire early. However, they haven't put enough money away. And one thing they don't have going for them then at that particular time is the, the ability for compounding interest because investments really take time to uh, generate the type of gains that uh, most investors and retirees are looking for. So we refer to it uh, as a lot of people trying to catch lightning in a bottle. When they start getting into their late 50s, they panic and start uh, putting away money. But again, compounding interest and time is not on their side. So the very basic thing that we want to talk about first is save and invest. We're going to talk about some of those places we should be putting money all along, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or even 60s. So Tyler, let's talk about some of the basic places that we really want people to start putting money into if they're looking to plan on retiring early. Yeah, Dean, so when it comes to things you can do right now to prepare for retirement, um, one of the first things would be to start by saving and investing your money. And what, uh, what we mean by that is first off, Um, saving when it comes to cash positions or investment um, accounts that's what we're referring to Uh, but but uh, specifically when I talk about saving that would mean uh, making sure that you have your emergency fund built up so we uh, we typically recommend three to six months worth of living expenses in your savings that is liquid in a money market position or a high yielding savings account or something like that because Um, Some of the next steps that we're going to get to when it comes to things you can do right now to prepare for retirement, you will be thrown off track or won't be able to do those unless you have an emergency fund built up first. So uh, make sure that you have an emergency fund saved for that, but then um, invest would be the one of the number one things. And when we talk about investing, many people right now, they have access to um, a 401k or a retirement sponsored plan or an employer-sponsored retirement plan through work. That's gonna be the first place that we recommend when it comes to investing for retirement that you can do right now to prepare for that. So um, again, 401ks are one of the um, one of the most common, but some people out there might have 403Bs, 457 plans, different things like that. With a 401k, um, right now in 2020, you can contribute up to $19,500 per year into your 401k if you're under 50. So um, that's almost $20,000, which is a huge chunk that you can put in. Um, many people aren't able to put that all that into their right away. Obviously, that's something that you have to work your way up toward. But then once you get age 50 or older, you can then put in $26,000 into your 401k for 2020. And this is each year and that those contribution limits they tend to increase a little bit every year. So again, um, if you're under 50 years old, you can put up to $19,500 into your 401k, 403b, um, your retirement plan through work. Or if you're 50 years or older, you get to put up to 26,000 per year um, into your 401k. So again, really, uh, really generous contribution limits. We really encourage people to take advantage of that if they can. But then many people, they either don't have a 401k or what we recommend is for those people that have a 401k with a match, we recommend contributing up to the match 
then if you don't have a Roth option within your 401k, we recommend going then outside after the match, going outside the 401k and contributing to a Roth IRA. Now, a Roth IRA, that would be um, a type of account where you put in after-tax dollars and then anything you put in plus any of the growth is tax-free at 59 and a half years old. So Roth accounts are uh, becoming very popular. We're really big advocates of Roth accounts for the tax benefits. But with a Roth IRA, you can contribute up to $6,000 a year or $7,000 if you're 50 or older. So again, even if you don't have access to a 401k or if you don't like your company or if your 401k investment options aren't very good, you can go outside to a Roth IRA and contribute up to either $6,000 or $7,000 there depending on your age. Um, so really when it, comes to, when it comes to investing, there's a lot of options out there. Um, it comes down to first and foremost choosing the right account. Again, Dean, we recommend that people go right into the 401k when it comes to, um, or if they, have a, if they have a match, go right to the 401k up to the match. And then if they don't have any Roth option, then go outside and max out your Roth account and then go back into the 401k again. So um, many people who are working, you have options to that. You have options when it comes to those different types of retirement accounts. But choosing where to put the money and then putting the money and investing it, that is the that is the biggest obstacle. That's the first thing that you have to do. And once you do that, then it comes down to um, choosing the correct investment options based on your individual goals. So for many people who are younger, they're, you're going to want to contribute into very growth, um, growth stock mutual funds within your 401k, um, within your Roth account, even individual stocks, ETFs, but you want it to be more growth oriented when you're younger. And then when you get older, as you get closer to retirement, you can still have a bucket that's allocated toward growth, but you might want to scale back your risk a little bit and get um, slightly more and more conservative as you get closer to retirement age. But really what it comes down to is uh, choosing the right type of account to invest in, then trying to invest in that account, trying to work your way up to 15% of your income towards your retirement accounts. And then lastly, making sure that you're picking the right investment options. If you start there and try and do those things early and often, um, that is one of the number one things that you can do right now to prepare for retirement. Okay, good points, Tyler. Um, also remember too, when it comes to investing right now, when, during times of volatility, if you're younger, you should relish the thought that the market uh, might be down. And part of the reason is you will buy uh, uh, more shares per dollar and um, you really shouldn't be too concerned with the volatility. The volatility bothers people as we get a little bit closer towards retirement we would like to look at maybe a little bit more conservative nature of those investments. However, even when you're going into retirement, don't forget that you still have to look long term. You need to look out a significant period of time because I think everybody going into retirement anticipates they're going to live another you know, 20 or 30 years thereafter. So it's still long term investing, uh, but you still have to look at short term um, economic information and data that's happening. So look long term uh, the next thing we want to talk about you know if you're looking to um, you know retire right now the next thing we should look at is you know plan to cover health care costs this is one that catches a lot of people off guard we'll have people that we talk to and they say well you know based on on my math and and putting together the plan or the excel spreadsheet i have um, it looks like i should be able to retire okay, what does that mean? So we typically sit down and go through, okay, what are your expenses? That's the number one thing we really need to look at. What are your goals in retirement? Are you looking to travel and, and certain items like that? So before we talk about you know, putting together a financial plan, we get into this and then I ask them, you know, um, you know what is your plan for health care? Well, I'll, I'll go and get health insurance. Yeah, we understand that, but do you, do you understand that health insurance right now through the Affordable Care Act, once you leave your employer's plan, is based um, on income? And most people are still not aware of that. So you need to understand that if you have income that takes you over a certain threshold, and that threshold, for instance, for married filing jointly is right around $64,000, $65,000 a year, um, if you go over that, your health insurance premiums are going to be pretty high. They're going to be very high. They're going to be, you know, to a point where it keeps some people from retiring. 
And unfortunately, a lot of the health insurance um, options that are out there through the Affordable Care Act also have not only high premiums, but the deductibles are high. So, you know, you have to have significant, um, unfortunately, health related expenses before, you know, you even have some relief when it comes to, um, you know, coverage. So when it comes down to health insurance, uh, understand that your health insurance options, when you're bridging that gap between retirement and Medicare are going to be based on income. And if you do not have your investments set up to be able to withdraw from certain accounts that are favorable uh, as uh, income or lack of income, it's going to hurt you with health insurance premiums. So as an example, when Tyler and I and the rest of the advisors here start talking to uh, people about putting together a retirement plan, in our 50s, we're already looking at potentially other options other than just the standard 401k because every dollar you pull out of the traditional part of the 401k in retirement that you need to, to cover your expenses is going to show up as income when it comes to your insurance premiums. However, if you have money, as Tyler said just earlier here, in Roth accounts, you can pull that money uh, during that time period between retirement and, and Medicare, which is 65 years old. You can pull money from the Roth account and large portions from non-qualified accounts and it won't show up as income, even though it does go into your pocket. So we need to make sure that your your uh, accounts are set up properly if you look to retire early. Also understand too that COBRA isn't always the best option anymore. A lot of people in the past used to think when they retire, they would take COBRA for an extended period of time automatically. Well, now we, we, we price that out and look at what the Affordable Care Act is going to pay in premiums based on your income. And one last thing here before I hand it over to Tyler, and that is when it comes to your health care, do understand that when you go into retirement, health insurance and Medicare supplements or Advantage plans are not long-term care plans. So if you have a situation where you or a spouse uh, go into a long-term care facility, do understand that health insurance and Medicare does not cover that. Yeah, Dean, really good points there. When it comes to um, planning for health care costs and health insurance, one of the main things that we as advisors have been forced to do a lot of lately is what I call health insurance income planning. And I'd say every single week, multiple multiple times a week, we meet with clients and we go through their retirement plan and they have enough to retire before Medicare age. So right now Medicare age is 65. Um, they have enough financially, they've done a, a good job, they've accumulated enough in retirement funds to retire before that age. However, if they do and they want to maintain their um, standard of living, they have to go out onto the um, Affordable Care Act. And what happens then is, Dean, as you had mentioned, income is all based on, or your premiums are all based on what you show as income. So going out on to the Affordable Care Act then and trying to get affordable premiums, ironically, it becomes pretty unaffordable if you make over a certain threshold based on the income that you show. So what we really have to plan around and this again it starts with planning early and often would be different types of tax advantageous accounts again a roth account or even a non-retirement account different accounts that allow you to spread out your taxes or not pay any taxes when you take a withdrawal out of it those are the accounts that we encourage people to invest in early on because um, it will allow people to retire earlier based on health insurance right now so again, when it comes to health insurance, you really want to do some income planning because the last thing that you want is to have enough uh, money in your 401k to be able to retire at 60 years old and maintain your standard of living. But yet, if you do that, your health insurance premiums will skyrocket to the point that it's no longer affordable and you have to wait until 65. And how you can get around that is by planning early and putting money in different types of Roth or non-retirement accounts that will help you pull from it and show either no income or minimal income. Um, now for healthcare costs itself, we we are definitely advocates of HSAs. HSAs are, are becoming um, a lot more popular. That stands for health savings accounts. Uh, many employers have them. Some banks or credit unions also have them. It allows you to claim a deduction for um, investments in the year you make them. 
and to make tax-free withdrawals to pay for qualifying health care. So HSAs are used for um, health, certain uh, qualifying health care expenses, but they also are very tax advantageous because you get a deduction for contributing to one and you get a tax-free withdrawal for taking the money out. So um, HSAs, again, we're, we're advocates of those. Uh, right now, you can contribute. Typically, it's the tax filing deadline for the year before. Right now in 2020, it's July 15th that you can contribute for the 2019 tax year. Um, and then lastly, if you don't have an HSA through your employer, then adding to your 401k or investing in a Roth account potentially and using that for uh, medical expenses, that would be your next best bet. Um, and again, when it comes to any type of Roth IRA or traditional IRA, whether it be for Medicare, uh, medical expenses or for invest, investing in retirement funds, you have until July 15th to contribute for the tax year 2019. Um, for any other tax year, it's typically April 15th. Okay, before we continue, we're gonna take a quick break. You're listening to Dean and Tyler Listel, investment advisors with Secure Retirement Solutions located on Packerland Drive in Green Bay. For a complimentary review of your current investments or if you have questions, please call them at 920-347-9888 or go to their website at srsplans.com. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about, again, these are things you can do right now to prepare for retirement. This is a big one, too, and that is uh, pay off your debt. Uh, Tyler and I have had uh, previous shows where we talk about in our 50s, we like to see people really significantly knock off their debt as well as, you know, maybe look at Roth conversions at that particular time. And the reason we say in your 50s to knock off debt, first of all, you're, very, you're closer to retirement than you are to starting a new job, typically. That's number one. And, you know, number two, when it comes to paying off your debt, you're typically at the highest point of your payroll scale uh, in your 50s because you've accumulated more experience. So pay off that debt before you go into retirement. We love to sit, sit down with um, clients who have paid off significant amount of debt or are debt-free going into retirement. It is so much easier to have... Uh, a comfortable retirement plan because you don't have the burden of having to pay every month on a mortgage or credit cards or vehicles. So we'd like to see you start paying off your debt. As a matter of fact, there are times where we, we will talk to pre-retirees that might have a, a three or four or two year time frame before their scheduled retirement. Their financial plan shows they can retire on a certain date. And the question will come up, should I be contributing more to my 401k? I still have the ability to. Well, most times, first of all, as financial advisors, we love the idea of contributing more, but many times we will look back at it and say, well, you know what, instead of contributing more, maybe what we do is use that additional money you would be contributing to pay off your debt, get rid of the mortgage, whatever it may be. I am not a doctor, either is Tyler, but we do know that people who have paid off their, their mortgages before they go into retirement uh, tend to have less stress. We just see that as an observation. Um, so again, paying off your debt in your 50s and as pre-retirement is crucial. Try to use that as a goal to go into retirement debt-free. However, we do see situations where people have had a mortgage for a significant period of time and their mortgage is relatively low, six or $700 or maybe even $800. In today's environment, that's actually a pretty low monthly payment. So is it worth paying off uh, the mortgage if you can carry that uh, you know, low monthly mortgage amount? Something you have to look at in a financial plan, but have that discussion with your financial advisor. Yeah, Dean, good point there. Um, and again, when it comes to um, things you can do right now to prepare for retirement, in addition to saving, um, investing, planning for health insurance and healthcare costs, paying off debt would be the next big one where we've seen that uh, debt has become such a huge problem for uh, many people, both younger and older, and more people than ever are heading into retirement with with debt. They're carrying that burden with them into retirement, and it just makes a retirement plan that much more complicated um, to try and execute if they have large debt payments. So um, ideally, you want to have all, all your debts knocked out. I mean, some people do carry a mortgage with them into retirement, which... Um, can be doable. That can make it. They can make that work. 
But by getting that paid off before retirement, it's such a huge burden that's lifted off their shoulders. Um, and the last thing that you want to do is be strapped with your with your fixed income. You don't want to have your social security check go all towards your mortgage payment. You want to have that for different types of lifestyle expenses so you can enjoy your retirement. Um, now we we recommend if you do have debt, whether it be um, credit cards, uh, student loans, car loans, just write them out, make a list of them, and slowly knock them out one by one. Take your smallest balance and knock that one out, and then go right on down the line. Um, get all your smaller debts knocked out, and then try and tackle that mortgage before you hit uh, retirement age. Before you get to retirement, try and see if you can get that mortgage knocked out, um, because by paying off debt, that will allow you to allocate your retirement income to uh, so many more different enjoyable things. And oftentimes when we run a retirement plan or a financial plan for clients, one thing that we'll notice is if they knock out their mortgage or certain types of debt before retirement, that will allow their retirement funds, the money that they have in their 401k, to last that much longer because that money is no longer being allocated toward debt. It's being allocated towards different types of um, luxury items and expenses that people want in retirement. So um, again, start by paying off your debt right now so that way you don't have to worry about going into retirement with debt. You can go into retirement debt free and not have to worry about being strapped with any form of debt. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention before we get to um, our last item here is whether it be paying off debt or investing, if for anyone that is going through a job change or a job loss or um, whether it be right now or any other turbulent time, if you have a plan where you're really investing or paying down debt and you get laid off, one thing that we um, recommend would be stockpiling cash in a time where, where you might have um, very low job security. So just keep that in mind because oftentimes I will get questions from clients that even if they're um, potentially getting laid off, they want to know, well, should I still be investing or should I still be um, paying off debt? it might be best to pause that during any type of uncertainty and then pick it back up once you get um, hired on again. So that's just one last thing I wanted to say there. Okay. And again, if we're looking at things that you can do right now to prepare for retirement, have a plan. Um, many times people will go into retirement blind. Uh, they, they don't understand how much it's going to cost for health insurance. They don't realize or write down their expenses and they find out that their income options are significantly less than what they thought. The market goes into a, a downturn and they're required to make some additional expense payments at that time so they draw the account down quicker than what they anticipated. All of these things can be looked at and, and approached head on if you have a financial plan created. Um, you've heard us say this in the past, we create financial plans complimentary for each and every client that we have here. You come in our door to meet with us. We're going to put together a financial plan. Again, they're complimentary. We do that because we need to see where you're at. As a fiduciary, we need to see where you're at before we make any recommendations. But have a plan, something that models out your, your income needs. For instance, you sit down and you create your expenses and, and uh, the financial advisor is going to look at the expenses and find out, okay, how much income needs to be generated to cover those expenses. Therefore, that determines what type of investment or retirement plan you put together. It models out your social security. Should you be taking it at 62, 65, 67, 70? It'll answer those things. It'll look at inflation. That's where many people make a mistake. They'll put together an Excel spreadsheet with their expenses and with their income but they won't look at inflation. Inflation is going to be with us continuously throughout our lifetime. So these are some of the things you need to have. The other thing too is by designating a financial plan to writing, chances are you're going to stick with it significantly longer than if you just have it in your mind what your, your budget's going to be. Yeah, good point there, Dean. Um, having a plan, what that does is that allows you to have um, goals that you're intentional about. Otherwise, if you don't have a plan, there's really no guideline. There's nothing that you can follow to get to where you want to be. And it all starts with creating that plan. And arguably, having a plan might be the number one thing that you can do right now um, to prepare for retirement. Because, um, again, by doing that, it will allow you to have goals. And when you create a plan, it will tell you where to put your money, how much you need to be investing if you want to retire at a certain age. So it's something that we do for, um, for all of our clients. 
Um, and by being proactive and having that plan, you have a greater likelihood of success when it comes to retiring on your terms and not being caught off guard. And the last thing when it comes to um, planning, one last item that we've been seeing a lot lately is um, having a plan will allow you to know what your tax implications might be before you retire when it comes to your retirement income. Now, many people, they don't realize the tax implications of social security income. With social security, it's potentially not taxed at all. Tax up to 50% or tax up to 85% depending on your total combined income. So that is something that people are unaware of. Uh, pension income, many pensions are taxed or retirement account withdrawals. So it's important to know how your Roth IRA um, is taxed. And by the way, it isn't. <laughs> your non-retirement accounts and then your 401k. Many people don't realize how the taxes works with those accounts. And it's important to start planning early so you can know which accounts to put money into. Um, we just ran into this uh, um, a little situation with some of our clients where they did an awesome job. They put away a ton of money in their 401ks, but they wanted to retire early and it became a little bit more difficult because the 401ks, they're fully taxed and they have to pay a 10% penalty if um, you're under 59 and a half years old. So um, just by knowing what your plan might be and if you do wanna retire earlier, you can then put money into a Roth IRA or a non-retirement account because the tax and penalties aren't there if you wanna take the money as income and retire early. So um, again, one of the one of the most, most important things that you can do right now is having a plan, by having a plan and having goals, you're not just blindly throwing money at certain accounts and certain investments without any intention or reason behind it. You have a guideline that will get you to where you wanna be. Okay, and remember that preparing for retirement is a lifelong project. Uh, start early is best. However, don't pack it in if you haven't started until your 40s, 50s, or even 60s. Um, it's never too, never too late. Of course, earlier the better. So hope you got something out of this information today. That's all the time we have this week. See you later and hope you'll join us again next week. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to Secure Retirement Solutions with your hosts, Dean and Tyler Listel, fully licensed retirement specialists from Secure Retirement Solutions in Green Bay. To get more information from Dean and Tyler, contact them on Packerland Drive in Green Bay. Call 920-347-9888 or visit them at srsplans.com. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC. Member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services is not an affiliated company. 